What's your pleasure, sir? Alright, well, welcome to another episode of the Cinephiles and Cenobites podcast. My name is Anofri, and with me, the other half of this show, my hetero life mate, Mox. Hey, what's up, Ono? What's going on, man? Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you as well, sir. Happy holidays. <laughs> but do you happy holidays to me, sir? Happy yes. holidays. All right, so um, this is going to be the last episode of the year. And we'll be back uh, sometime after New Year's. In the latter part of yep, January. Yes. It's been an exciting year for film, as always. Today, we're going to be reviewing Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Uh, the sequel to the 1980s The Shining by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, this film is directed by Mike Flanagan. Hell yeah, Mike Flanagan. Shout out to Mike Flanagan. And this one, uh, Dr. Sleep, so it, it follows the um, the events of The Shining. So now it's an adult, Dan Torrance, mm -hmm. uh, who's kind of like, he starts off. Like, He's all fucked up. Yeah. The bad part of his father, this is where, how he starts off now. Like, he's a uh, addict. He got alcoholic. that demon. Yeah. yeah. And so now it turns out that other people have, or, well, he's As already well. known that other people have this shining, but now um, one who's a bit more on the powerful side. And, she... and Right, we find out about there are actually a group who hunt people who can shine because that's how they stay immortal, right? Yes, yeah. So I we forgot people... what those dudes is called, but it is head the, by the, the true gorgeous. Oh, that's right. Um, Go on, gorgeous. Memory. The gorgeous uh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yes. Shout out to Mission Impossible. Fuck yeah. And Wonder Woman. I think she was the bad guy in that one too. Oh, and uh, shout out to Cliff Curtis, who's also in this movie. Hell yeah, Uncle Bully. Cliff Curtis, Uncle Bully. Shout out to Shining Training Day. Bully. Yo. Live Free Die Hard. Oh, yeah. Sunshine. Oh, God, that's right. <laughs> He's Fuck. In I don't I don't want to say it, but he was also in the last airbender. Ugh. Oh damn. But you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Oh, he was in the piano. He was one of the Maoris who carried the piano. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Uh and also um walking not the walking, um Fear the Fear, fear the, the Walking, walking did. Yeah. did. Yeah. Actually I, I haven't caught up or I haven't seen any it's episodes Travis. like since like so I don't know if he's even still in the series. I I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I gave I gave I given zero fucks about Walking Dead. Although it got kind of interesting on the actual Walking Dead side. You know, after they killed off everybody, they got a new great villain played by the always awesome. Um, oh, Samantha Morton. Samantha Morton. There we go. Yeah, I she's said Samantha Mathis. I love her in in this. This iteration of The Walking Dead, like she's awesome in this one. Fuck, dude, when she got something good to you to play with, she fucking knocks it out of the park. Yes, yes. Oh, and she's one of those people who's always on and elevates even the shitty shit she's in. Mm, all right. Well, I can't like that blatant rip off of Time Cop, known as Minority Report. That was, that was a rip off, but it was a good movie, even though it was a rip off. It was off, dope, yeah. actually. We both know it was a superior film. To yes, I, I, I don't know if it's superior. Maybe <laughs> let it go. You know, like they don't be one of those guys who can't let it go. They're kind of like, they just parallel, like they're it's a tie. It's a, one's not well. Time Cop's a little bit better, just because. Well, um, know. I disagree because let's just look at these two films. One of them was directed by Steven Spielberg, and the other was not. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's damn. Uh, and of course, Ewan McGregor is awesome in this movie. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So fuck yeah. I've been waiting a while to see Obi Wan in something that I like and give a fuck about because he popping up in all of this shit. I don't like give a shit about. Mm. When fifteen years ago he was being in a lot of movies that I loved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or sort of love, like I don't know that I was in love with the prequels, like everyone else hated it too. But I loved how he played Obi Wan. Mm. 
So Doctor Sleep is in reference to mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor's character, mm-hmm. who kind of um, uh, there's this cat that goes around the, uh, I think it's a care home that he works. No, like at. a hospice. A yeah. hospice. Okay. Um, and so each room that this cat goes into, uh, it's, he's like the death cat. He's, yes, it, that urban legend. Um, it's like this, uh, and that it'll be that person's kind of like final yeah. night. And so you and McGregor would go in there and just talk with them until they they went to sleep. He actually right, and then he starts helping them transition into the other side by calming them. Yeah, essentially yeah. Um, easing their fears. And that's, uh, I think, a major theme in this story, because later, right, uh, we find out that even the immortals, they're even more afraid to die than their mortal counterparts. Yes. Like when when old man fucking Lurch, dude. Spoiler. Sorry. I'll, you know, in, case, <laughs> in case you were listening. Spoiler. Hasn't seen it because, I mean, we gave you two months. The movie's been out two months. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. this in theaters anymore. But the oldest dude of the bad guys bites it. And fuck, that actor is uh, gave an amazing performance. I've never seen somebody so fuck. I've never seen a monster that terrified. Like he looked like a child. He supposed to be ten thousand. He's was around with the fucking Romans and shit. Yeah, well, that Jesus is Lurch, Christ, right? probably. Oh god, that was Lurch. Yeah, That's, Carol yeah, Strickland who played who played Strui. Lurch. Yeah, but he gave a great performance as Grandpa Death or whatever the fuck his fucking name was. But yeah. as he bites it. Fuck the look of terror. Yeah, because it's like you think because they know that it's just nothingness after that. Well, it can't be nothingness because then you know. I think it's punishment. punishment. They've done so much bad to stay in this realm that it's going to catch up with them in the next. Ah, and those guys don't. They they don't let them go to waste. <laughs> Fuck, they're pretty vicious. Yeah. I'm sure in the book they even worse. Oof, yeah. Um. They killed the fucking kid from the room, Jacob Tremblay. Oh, wow. Okay. Or room, not the room. Room? Jacob that movie Tremblay. where him and fucking Captain Marvel was trapped in a room and shit. Ah, okay. Sure, sure. Never oh. seen it uh, because I just, I can't with her. <laughs> oh, man. So this is actually kind of like how I was introduced to Aliens. Alien franchise. So I started off with the sequel and I really enjoyed right. this film. And, and it did, like, from what I remember of The Shining, the first one, it, it feels like a slow burn. Um, At this point, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's too slow for you to get started now. Um, and so it was like Doctor Sleep, it was definitely a little more action oriented just because the group got me, bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now you got, you got, actually, yeah. It's less. It's not really a horror film. There are horror elements and shit, but it is not a horror film. Mm. It's a, I think, coming of middle age actioneer. I don't know, but it's it's an interesting blend. And if you go in expecting The Shining or even something close to it, for one, why would you do that? Don't be a dummy. Yeah. And for two, if you happen to be a dummy and do that, you're gonna be sorely like, fuck this movie. <laughs> Yeah. So that's the most ex- that was the exciting part was like okay now we got we got Cliff Curtis on board we got you and McGregor getting um you know the little the little girl the little the shiner the shiner I do I love this movie I super love this movie I I have to say though it kind of meanders through a bunch of different tones and at its worst it felt like late nineties television Stephen King. Mm. Which was pretty, was actually great, um, but still a little bit made for TV feeling. Like, um, oh yeah, like it would still scare you, but like, not. There's just something cheap about it, or something just fucking sure. off about it. But it, it's actually fun. You don't sit there. It doesn't fucking jump the shark, so to speak. Where you're like, fuck this movie. It's just like, oh, what the fuck? We're I mean, in a shootout in the woods. Yeah. That's, well. And it was just us in the theater, right? Like, and we, just oh, every time that was we just... another thing. Yeah, we had the whole theater. Because we had the whole theater, I could, like, talk in my normal loud voice. Yes. You know. Well, and every time Cliff Curtis came on the screen, we were, like, just cheering. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
Uncle Bully. If you guys don't know what that's in reference to, he played a character called Uncle Bully in a early 90s film from New Zealand called Once Were Warriors. Yeah. I'd be referencing Training Day, but that's just a little too dark right now, too. So if you know. Oh, fuck you. I mean, just that whole scene with Cliff Curtis. (laughs) You want to talk about horror? That is a horror scene. Like, fuck. That was. Actually, that one scene was scarier than the entire Doctor Sleep. So I'll just contextualize this film with that scene. The scene in Training Day with Cliff Curtis, Michael Cruz. Full of suspense and dread. Right. And terror. It builds to absolute terror. (laughs) Fuck. Oh, you you know my cousin? You know my cousin? You want to see your wife, boy? Hey, no hard, no hard feelings, sir. That's just business, sir. Eh? Just, just business. business. Just with his thick ass mustache. I think it was a mustache yeah. that just made yeah, him look yeah. Latino. Yeah. Just business, okay? Just business. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever yeah, the no, line was. We are probably butchering those oh, Latino accents. Sorry about that. No, but that 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 was <laughs> that was a. That's the dark scene. That's probably dark. Yeah, the darkest scene in Training Day is superior to uh, any dark scenes in Doctor Sleep. Yeah, it's really not. There's no um, feeling of dread or uh, suffocation like The Shining. Um, it feels much sure. more sprawling. And I don't know. It works for what it does. And it feels like what it is, a Mike Flanagan film, which is excellent. So you just got to, you know, know that you're going to see a Mike Flanagan film. Ah, right, how right. Mike Flanagan does Stephen King. Yes. And um, I haven't read the source material, but I imagine it's like, I've heard it's better. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Shout out to Nori. Yeah. Oh, and uh, and and uh, Ante Novakovic. Ante Novakovic. Yep. One of the classiest directors working today. Yeah. All right. Well, Dr. Sleep, you heard it here. Yo, Yo watch, watch CC. C-C. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Happy holidays. And uh, see you next year. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with us. All right. Well, that is it for this episode. Uh, thank you for checking it out. Be sure to check out this episode's show notes for links to all our social media sites. But other than that, be sure to visit our website, necomedia.com. That's N E K K O media.com. Dot com. And we also be on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, very active on both of those. And you can check those out at cynical underscore mass. That's C-I-N-E-C-A-L underscore M-A-S-S. And feel free to get in touch through email, cinephilesandcinebytes at gmail.com. Any movie recommendations, we'd love to check it out. Any screeners? Any screeners? We'd love to review. Any potential guests? Yeah, we love having guests on the show, too. Yeah, if you're a filmmaker, fucking hit us a line and we'll get you on the show. A fellow. Ask you your top six movies and what it's like to be an artist like you. Oh, yes. And uh, any fellow cinephiles and cenobites, you are welcome. Yes. Any place that they can hit you up, Mox? At villainous underscore kind. Uh, Instagram and um, fucking Twitter. But don't bother. Um, I rarely <laughs> I rarely check it except when I'm drunk. So oh, okay. I, I'd either send it to Ono or the show. <laughs> Yeah, you can check me out on uh, Twitter at this is Ono. That's it. this is O H N O. Same goes for Instagram. Oh no. Yup. All right. Well, thank you again. Take it away, Annika. This has been a Neko Media podcast, broadcasting from the Blood Cave, part of the Slash Tag Potter family. Family. For myself, Annika Pussyfoot, Mox, and Ono. Keep the lights on and check under that bed. Because there's only one universal truth. No lives matter. That means you. Stay rating, Wokeland. We have candy. Probably both, it's really
Shit Podcast. Tiger Shit Podcast.